Hey, the developer Stack Overflow survey for 2023 is here. Let's take a look at the most loved frameworks, the most hated, dreaded frameworks, where you can make the most money and the surprising rise of AI and how important it has become to us as developers. There's a bunch of topics that have been asked, some more interesting than others. And the first thing is the developer profile, right? So if we click on this, we can see who is in the community along with us. Most people have got a bachelor's degree and then followed by a master's degree. But this is very different between the um, professional devs, right? They've got more of that. And then the person or the people learning to code, they have got way more of a just secondary school and then um, less bachelor's degree and almost no master's degree, which I found very interesting. And then if we go down here, learning to code, how are people learning to code? And what I found surprising is that most people learn to code 80% with other online resources, such as the videos I do here on YouTube and all my fellow coding YouTube creators also do as the most popular medium, which is pretty cool. And I think it makes sense because videos really are a great resource to learn. You've got the people explaining what they're doing, why they're doing it. And it's just a bit more interesting than reading through the technical documentation. Um, and then we've got books, which I did not expect. So many people learning from physical media. Interesting. I didn't think that was a thing, but it is. And then actually school. And I think this really depends on what you're learning. I think in web development, as we do here on this channel, this is not very widespread. In fact, most people are probably self-taught in the web development, but most other languages like, um, you know, desktop app development or software development in general is actually taught at schools in like uh, computer science, right? So um, the, the, the web devs are in kind of like a bubble there. Um, and then as you can see right here, as I mentioned earlier, the technical documentation is um, the most popular way to learn how to code. It makes sense because I think everybody has to read technical documentation if they want to get into a certain topic. And what I didn't expect is Stack Overflow to still be so high. Um, I thought it was really on the decline, especially with AI. And I personally just read through GitHub issues and ask ChatGPT. And that's how I mostly get my code. Or I ask other um, coders on their takes and I rarely visit Stack Overflow. It'd be interesting to hear if you are still using Stack Overflow this much, because I really didn't expect that. Um, anyways, that's just one of the things I wanted to show you. Let's go back to the main results and look at the second interesting thing. And that is the most popular um, tech. And it is Docker. It's not NPM, and then it's followed by pip, homebrew, yarn. We've got webpack in here. Kubernetes a bit lower. And then if we go to the bottom, we can see, for example, cargo, um, th that is for Rust. And composer, Unreal Engine. Um, we can see, okay, these are barely used by anyone. And then the by far um, most used integrated development environment, um, just the code editor is VS Code. I think it makes sense. Everybody I see basically uses VS Code. And all the people that scream around that Vim is so nice, I mean, they scream really loud for the low percentage that they are because it's just 22%. And then NeoVim is just 11.8%. So people that use NeoVim make it seem like there are a ton of people just because they're so loud and make so much noise around how awesome NeoVim is, which it might actually be. I'm not saying it's not, um, but they just account for a very small percentage of people, which I found interesting, judging by um, how many times I've read, for example, in my Discord that people use NeoVim. Um, I, I, I expected a higher percentage, to be honest. And then there's a lot of stuff that I've never heard about. But way more interesting is what frameworks are actually liked, what do people enjoy using, and what would people use again? So you can see the question right here is, which framework have you done extensive development in in the past year, and which do you want to work in again? Right, so we can see, for example, React is up here, 63, as I understand, it means 63% would use it again. And there's way, like for example, jQuery is pretty much hated and dreaded. Nobody really enjoys it anymore, like 32% would use it again. Okay, and we can see one thing, um, oh, by the way, Angular, <laughs> nobody likes Angular. I found this absolutely hilarious, 19.2% would use it again, or maybe, 4% would use it again. I'm not the desired and admired naming is really weird for me, but, but in general, the far left or the further left this bar, the more people like it and would use it again. That's the gist of it. And AngularJS does pretty horribly. 
and jQuery does pretty horribly as well. And then there's something I have never heard of, and that is Phoenix. And I've Googled what this is, and this turns out to be an Elixir framework to make it really cool to build web applications. So this is a web tool. And what I found most interesting about it is the real time. Interact with users and push events across one of dozens of nodes by, build, by using our built-in pub sub and channels, which ties in with the scalability aspect that runs on the Erlang VM with the ability to handle millions of WebSocket connections, which sounds pretty neat, which sounds pretty impressive to be honest. And one thing I've also noticed is that with a lot for these newer JavaScript frameworks, people really enjoy them. Like Remix, I mean, Remix is not too new, but um, Quick, for example, there's Solid.js right here. There's um, Nuxt, I guess not so much, but especially for these newer frameworks, people always really enjoy them. It was the same thing with Svelte and so on. People just love them because they're not really used in production anywhere. And as they mature and are mo more and more used in production, I think um, this graph always leans more towards the left side that people would want to use it less, which is, I think, a very natural development in the maturity of a framework. And um, for example, Next.js is right up here. It's even more so admired than plain React is, which I found interesting, because after all, it does add a layer of abstraction to React that allows you to do more stuff, like the image component, the link component, the built-in routing. It's just very convenient, so it makes sense that it would be above React. And then we can see Svelte is really liked, and I get it. Svelte is really cool, and it's even more so admired than Next.js is. Now let's see what pays well. If you want to make the big bucks, what should you use? And the answer is you should use Zig. You get paid a lot if you use Zig, and then there's a lot of stuff that comes before what us web devs make. And um, for example, if you want to make more money than JavaScript devs, you can actually use TypeScript. It's way down here with the $77,000 um, per year. And then if we move down just a bit, you can see JavaScript with 74,000. Um, so it is worth learning TypeScript just in the monetary sense and also just uh, maintaining your sanity, which is another pretty big argument for TypeScript. All in all, TypeScript has really established its place in production grade um, applications. And that shows in how much you make developing in it. And then there's plain HTML, CSS. And I'm honestly really confused as to why this is so high if you only know HTML, CSS, like that is so easy to learn and you make $70,000 for that is ridiculous, right? And then one thing I did not expect is how popular and how liked AI was in the development. I use it myself a lot and we can see right here, 43.78% are already using it and 25 more percent are planning to use it. So that's gonna be a big majority because they plan to use it soon. And then the sentiment, which I did not expect is really good. 27% very favorable, almost half is just favorable, and then there's 16.5% indifferent. But on the negative side, there's almost nothing. So people are recognizing that yes, AI is in fact a really good help when it comes to developing. But you have to be careful, GitHub Copilot can very well introduce bugs into your application, which is not awesome. So it's a for a good reason that most people just somewhat trust or distrust or neither trust nor distrust um, the input. You should never just blindly copy what GitHub Copilot inserts, because chances are it's gonna be syntactically correct, but I've had that multiple times. It's just a really hard bug to find because yeah, GitHub Copilot can introduce very, very tiny things into your app that just don't work as expected, but are syntactically correct. And it's just really hard to spot them. 